Hey, I heard people are struggling with tooltips and raycasts, so I thought I'd set one up manually with you. To start with, I've got this object here, I've used it countless times. It's just a base tooltip. It can be equipped and it does nothing. If we pop an inspector on this, you'll see that it is comprised of an object called base tip, which has a raw data tooltip and a grabbable component and a visual, which is just this uh, orange cone. Uh, this cone meets the sizing of a usual tip. What we're going to do next is we're going to put a sub object called tip, and this will be the tip of the tip. Yes, got that right, the tip of the tip. And we need to move that forward so that the gray box is just in front of the front of the cone. That's going to be where our raycast comes out of. Next, we're going to need to pull out a reference to the raw data tooltip. So I'm pulling that out now and we'll chuck that here. There is a shortcut node for a uh, raw data tooltip called raw data tooltip um, events and it's in the uh, tools folder. This makes dealing with them a lot more easier. It's also more efficient to use this. So please use this rather than doing fire on true on primary. Now we're going to need to raycast. There are multiple ways to raycast. There's a component and then there are two logics nodes. The best one for performance, and if you're doing a gun or a tool, is Raycast 1. This performs a Raycast once, not continuously like Raycast, and not continuously like Raycast Driver. So wherever possible, stick to Raycast 1. For Raycast 1, we plug in the primary pressed into the Raycast. We're going to need a slot reference here. So we'll use the tip for that. We'll need a direction. There's a shortcut to get the direction. We want the Z axis, which is the blue arrow, and we want it in the positive Z. But there's a shortcut to get that, uh, which you can do with transform forward, and then just don't put anything in the slot. And this will always return just straight forward. So it will plug forward into the direction property. For max distance, I just set it really high usually. You might want to lower this down if you have trouble. I'm just going to set it to 10,000 for now. I think that's all to it. We might need to specify the origin, but that should be covered by the slot variable. Now we're going to pull out um, the resultant hit. One thing to note with impulses on this node and a bunch of other nodes is that the values here are only valid for the length of this impulse here. This impulse usually only lasts like one frame or one update cycle, so you need to cache the value if you want to use it. So we need a couple more nodes. I'm going to pin this to me now as I'm moving around a lot. This is my first logics tutorial, so uh, bear with me. If we do a get slot, and we plug in the hit collider here, we'll get the slot for the collision. Um, this again is temporary because it's only on this uh, impulse here. So we need to save that. To save that, we're gonna be using variables. I'll break all of this down in subsequent tutorials, but for right now, we're gonna jump ahead as though you know these concepts. If you don't, please ask around. I'm sure someone will help you out. So all we're going to do here is write to this variable slot this slot value when we have a hit. And then we're going to pull this out and we have a display node of what was hit. One of the main problems when building tips is that these ribbons here are collidable. This causes a bunch of problems. So you can actually fix that whilst the logic is unpacked by moving out of the way. I didn't do a good job here about putting in a good situation. You can inspect the... Uh, appears to be getting the tip, not the ribbon. There we go, that's the ribbon. You can inspect the ribbon and you can find the mesh collider here. It shouldn't actually collide if it's not like that, but we'll just disable it anyway, just to double check. 
that should be all the others, uh, all the tips needed. Sorry, the ribbons needed because the west are um, at the back. So now when I click this, we should get a value. We're getting root anchor. I don't recognize that in the world, so I'm going to spawn a couple of things. Looks like I've got another ribbon maybe, so I'm going to inspect that ribbon. You can also get it from the slot here. Uh, so they'll have a, a link point and then a wire property. That's the wire that comes off of uh, an interface. And again, we can just, uh, oh, that's disabled already. Strange, because I was inspecting that one before. All right, we'll just try it again, but this time I'm gonna drop a box in and put this in front. Equip my tooltip, point it out here, and you'll see box. If we point it at me, we'll see collider. That's because the uh, hand has a collider on it. Point it here, we'll see chest. Let's do my face. Tragic001 is the name of my mask here. Let's try the little finger here. Oh, no, still just the hand collider. What about the logics menu over here? Content. The floor. The floor has a collider on it called collider. So we're working there. The next thing to do is just make that text box. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do exactly that, actually. We're going to put the text above it like that. So we're going to create a new text, basic, grab a text node, spin it around. For some reason, I'm not sure if this is a bug, but spinning stuff around with this hand is slower than this hand. It might be my controller. Doesn't affect things that much. So we're going to shrink this down and we're going to put it there. We'll just do rough. Um, trying to inspect just the text. There you go. There's the text. We'll take that and we'll parent it to our base tip. Close some inspectors here because I tend to end up with too many. We'll go to the basic and then we're going to grab the text renderer. Drop that down here. And then all we need to do is set the text value to be the name of the slot. So we do slots uh, get slot name. And we refer to this variable to get the slot name. And then we plug that into the text. So you'll see collider here. I'm now going to pack all of this because we're done. So under base tip, I'm going to create a new object. We'll name it logics. Oops, logics. Set our packing root. Just pack everything up. And then we can delete these. And then more deselect all on the inspector as well. There we go. So now when I equip this and I point it at things, it'll name them. Let's drop some random objects from my inventory in. There's a cow. Oh, did I crash Neos with my cow? Oh, there we go. I don't know what that's going to look like on the video. Doesn't matter. We almost crashed Neos with a cow. Tissue box. Uh, let's go to 3D models. So we've got 3D models. Come on. There we go. Traffic cone. Looks like I spawned like five. That's great. Here's uh, this pipe. Sorry, I don't usually do things with my left hand. That's why I'm struggling. We'll do this a bit faster with my right. Okay, there's a pizza. And let's do the chicken bone as well. Cool, so now we've got a lot of random objects in the world, so I can, oh, that should be grabbable. Uh, I can point that here, the bulldog smoking pipe. Um, for lots of like meshes created in different um, 3D modeling applications, you'll see this a lot. This means primitive zero, primitive zero, mesh 24. Doesn't really mean much, but uh, that's what you get from basic tools. So we'll point it at this sphere. This, compo uh, this chicken leg is actually just two spheres that have been stretched out. So there's sphere and sphere one. Let's see what the traffic cone is. Default, default, great. That's default, default two. Tissue box. The normals on the tissue mean you can only see it this way around. There you go, now it looks like a tissue box. What about the cow? I don't remember what I called the cow. Oh, it says cow, perfect. <laughs> Let's try the other animals. I got a 
a folder full of animals. We got this cat, and we got an elephant. Oh, I'm inside now, and we got a lion. Got two lions now. I was being impatient. Oh, just one. Okay, cool. So I moved the elephant out of the way of the cat. So I'll aim at the cat. Default object. That's again common with um, a certain 3D modeling application. What's this? Node ID 29. Great. What's that? Also Node ID 29. You can do things like get parent or get um, parent multiple times or find child or find parent or get children count to um, improve your results here. But uh, that's it for a basic tool. If you're looking for the base tip, it'll be in my public folder. You can get my public folder by messaging me or um, going to one of my worlds. It's in the box. It's in Builder Yeen. I'll put it in one of my other worlds as soon as I can find a way to make that reliable. Hope this helps. Goodbye.